EK mag. This mag came off of my 1927 International Harvester Type M 3 horsepower engine. And there is no spark. So let's take a quick run through this just to see what's going on with it. Other than very filthy because it looks like it was ran without the front cover on it. That's not good. It'll probably need to be rebuilt. So I'm going to see if I can make some videos going through replacing the coils, adjusting the points, the condenser, just going through looking at different. Very few tools are needed. A meter helps. And that helps to check your coils, bad wires. I don't have a meter to check the condenser. You can check it with ohms, but I would rather use a tester that actually checks condensers. Typically a flathead screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers. You can actually use wrenches to get in here and get on this nut. Ignore the pink, these are my daughters. They're quite simple. When I when this year was still mounted on the engine, I wasn't getting no spark. I only rolled it over a couple times. Um, the front cover wasn't on here. I also see that the wires here are frayed. I guess but I don't know if they're frayed or if somebody actually did that if they actually cut the covering off the reason why I say that because this one here is like this and this one over here is like this it almost looks like somebody tried to bypass the possibly bad coils and use the armature and a set of points and kept the engine running that's what it looks like. I don't know if that's right, but that's just a guess. When you're working on one of these, these up here are magnets. I don't know if you can see it or not, but these right here are magnets. When you go to rebuild one of these, don't take these out. You will totally ruin your mag. Just leave them in there. There's no reason to take them out. Even if you're just cleaning, just clean them up, brush them off, whatever you got to do. Blow all the gunk out of them. But leave those in there they're quite a simple operation if you know anything about lawnmower engines by 30 plus years ago you had a flywheel ignition coil magnets and points um, the only difference with this unit here is that these are contained into one area instead of outside of the flywheel under the flywheel on the flywheel, it's really all the pretty much the same thing. Same thing with a lawnmower engine. Basically what happens, um, armature here is closed. You are completing a magnetic field from the magnets that comes down to your iron cores, which is right in here. Comes down to your armature, back up this iron core, back up to this coil, back to your magnet, back across, back down. <clears throat> what happens here is that with your magnetic field flowing because your armature is closed inside your two coils here there's a primary set of coils and this magnetic field is charging that primary field um, when you open these and you break your point contact points, contacts, contacts, points, whatever, it's all the same thing. Um, when you break that, you're causing the magnetic field to collapse onto those iron cores. I don't know if you can see it down in there or not. Right there's your iron core. Those iron cores run up here through your coils on both sides. It goes back to your magnets. When you break this contact point here, the magnetic field collapses back onto these iron cores. Basically, what happens after that, it surges back out and it induces the secondary coils on both. One side of these is grounded down here. I don't know if you can see it down in there. There's a ground strap down in there. See that little lever right there? This side over here has got a spring on it. Kind of hard to see down in there. So what happens... When your secondaries become charged, it's a high voltage. So your primary is a very low voltage. 
your secondary has become a very high voltage, probably, I don't know, in the range, probably between 12, 14,000 volts. That voltage has to go someplace. It's going to go to the least path of resistance, and that is flowing out the spark plug wire back to here. And the gist, that is pretty much how they work. It's a very simple concept. Works very easily. I am going to tear this one down. I'll probably grab some videos of it. It's probably got to go into a rebuild. These are very notorious for not being grounded properly. I'm going to show you something on here. Right here in the back. So this here mounts on the engine like this. Your armature hangs down. Your strap comes across. And that's actually what actuates your armature and your points up and down when it opens and closes. On the back side here, where this mounts to the engine, there's a bracket. This here is a form of a bracket. This here came off a 3 horsepower IHC Type M engine. Now if you look right here, there is some weird, looks like paint, but it is really, really hard. It's like they tried to epoxy it or glue it or something on there. It is also on the back side of this bracket. There is like glue or something here. Well, you can't do that because... Wow, stuff just flew everywhere. You can't do that because this here has to be grounded. If you lose your ground, you're going to get an intermittent spark. There's some of these I've seen where... The grounding has been so bad, I don't know if it's because of a bad ground. Somebody maybe tried to paint this at one time, got paint all over it. They had this here off, they got paint all over this, they lost their ground. When they ran their bolts heads through or their bolts through the holes into the block, maybe it was given a little bit of a ground, maybe the threads were dirty and it couldn't ground properly, so you're getting an intermittent spark. On some of these, <laughs> I've seen where people have ran an actual ground wire from these screws, this one here is missing, and they went back to the block. Well, that's not right. Why don't you just fix the ground? I've also seen where they've opened up these screws here, and they ran some kind of a grounding strap underneath it here, so when they put the front cover back on, it regrounds everything. Well, if you have a problem like that, just fix it. There's th These are so simple, there's nothing to them. It's just done by coils of wire, set of points, and magnets that is really all there is to it they're basic they're easy so with that I'm gonna start up another video and we're gonna run through and we're gonna tear this thing down take a quick look at it maybe check the coils as we go just to see what's going on with it these are very very simple to work on you can get coils rebuild kits for these if you do an internet search you can find the coils and the contacts, the condensers. There's a few different types of condensers that I've seen in these. And they all seem to work. So this condenser in here looks original. I'm going to guess it's probably bad. It looks like it's bent. Yeah, that terminal right there looks like it's kind of bent up a little bit. So yeah, if you want to follow along, and I'll make another video. And we'll post it and we'll start breaking this down. What to look for. Checking the coils. I can't check the condenser because I don't have the tester for capacitors, but I'm just going to scratch that up as being bad. We'll get a new condenser, coils, depending on the points, those might just stay in there. And make a few videos, go through how to set the gap between the armature and the iron core, and then your points. All right. Till next time.